Now let's create our application. So I'm going to start by launching my console. I'm going to jump to the folder where I want to do my work. And I'm going to create uh, a new .NET console app by typing in .NET new console dash O graph console app. Now after creating the app, I'm going to run the following commands to install the Microsoft Authentication Library, the Microsoft Graph.NET SDK, and a few configuration packages to the project. So I'm going to jump into the Graph Console App folder. I'm going to say .NET add package Microsoft.identity.client. I'm then going to do, do the same thing, but install Microsoft.graph. Then I'm going to install the Microsoft.extensions dot configuration. I'm going to do the Microsoft, Microsoft extensions configuration file extensions. And then finally, I'm going to do the configuration JSON. Now that everything's been created, I'm going to launch the console app in VS Code by just typing in code dot. Now if VS Code uh, offers you to install required assets to build and debug um, the project, if presented with this option, uh, go ahead and select yes in VS Code. Now in our project, I'm going to create a new file here called appsettings.json. And in this file, I'm going to add the following to it. It's going to have a tenant ID and the application ID. We need to update these two values with the um, credentials or the details for the Azure AD app that we created uh, previously in this demo. So I have that saved on my desktop. So I'm going to grab the application ID and I also need to grab the tenant ID. There we go. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I need to create a new helper class. So what I'm going to do is create a new folder in my project called helpers. And in this helpers class, I'm going to create a new file called msal authentication provider.cs. And I'm going to paste in this code. Let's take a look at what this does. This implements the iAuthentication uh, provider and it implements a couple methods. We have a, um, a constructor that we're setting up here for the uh, authentication provider. And what this is doing is, make this a little bit bigger so we can see it, is that it's passing in a public client application, all the scopes and the current username and password for the current user. And um, that's gonna be used to log in. When we go to get an instance of our authentication provider, we're going to create a new instance of it by passing in these values and handing it back. Um, we're storing that locally as a singleton so that we don't recreate this multiple times. The task, the asynchronous task that's being run or that we have defined here uh, called authentication request async uh, is going to um, obtain an access token, which we'll look at in just a second. And then it's going to set that access token to the authorization header for all the requests um, that we're going to make. And then the method here that of the uh, get token async, what this is doing is this is going to be looking at our client application and it's going to go fetch uh, a token. So it's either going to try and uh, grab a, an account uh, this way. And then once it grabs the account using the get account async, it's then going to try to obtain um, the uh, uh, access token. Once that's finished, is then going to try to obtain the access token uh, by, for the current username, working with the username and a password, storing that as a result here, and then it's going to return back our access token uh, to the calling user. This is going to be used by uh, Microsoft Graph. Now let's go back to our project. I'm going to go into the program file, and I want to add a bunch of using statements we have uh, to the top of this file here. So these are all mostly for working with Microsoft Graph, um, working with Azure AD, uh, and specifically working with the um, Microsoft Authentication Library as well. And we're also importing in uh, our helpers. Now, one thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to load in the settings from our app settings file that I previously created. So I'm going to add in another method here called load settings. And all that's going to do is use the configuration builder to load our app settings, which is going to fetch the um, application or allow us to access the application ID and the tenant ID uh, that you can see here. Now, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to add in another method called the create authorization provider. This method is going to create an instance of the clients that we're going to use to call Microsoft Graph. 
So you can see here, we're setting up the client, we're getting the client ID, we're getting the authority. Um, it's using both the values from our connection, uh, our configuration uh, object that we have uh, in our app uh, that we just added. Um, and then we're getting a list of all the scopes or all the permissions that we're going to demand from um, Azure AD in, or for an, that we want our access token to have access to. Um, then we're going to create for our public application builder, we're going to create a new application using the, the following authority that we defined up on line 22. We're going to then create it and get an instance um, of the authentication provider uh, that we can use. And once we've done that, we can then add a method to obtain the Microsoft Graph client. So here we're getting an, auth an authenticated graph client, passing in the configuration, the username and the password. We're using that method that we just defined a second ago to use our configuration, passing in the user's username and password. Now we have an instance of the Microsoft Graph client. And we'll be able to use that to call um, and make requests to Microsoft Graph. Now what I need to do is I need to um, fetch the current user's uh, credentials. Uh, so that we can sign in on behalf of that user. Our app can sign in on behalf of that user. This is using the resource owner password flow. So the first one I'm gonna add is one to call uh, read password. And this is gonna um, prompt the user to enter their password into the console. I'm gonna read it in as a, as a secure string, um, but I'm not gonna display it to the screen. I'm just gonna write out a bunch of stars when it shows up. Um, I need to do something similar for our username as well. So I'm gonna add in another method for getting the user's username. Now, within our main method that you see right here, um, I'm gonna add the following code uh, to load the configuration settings from the app file or from the app settings file. So here we're loading our app settings and we have all of our app settings uh, all defined. The next thing we need to do is let's get the credentials from the user using the methods that we've already defined and we'll create a new instance of the Microsoft Graph authenticated client. So we're going to have them log in using their or provide our username and their password. And we're then going to uh, get the authenticated client from the user. So now let's go implement the code that's going to do the work for us that we want to do in this demo. What I've done is I'm issuing a request to get the user's files and I'm doing that using the Microsoft Graph client that we created and calling the .me.drive.root.children.requests method. What that's going to do is create a request uh, to get a list of all of the user's files in the root of the root folder uh, in their OneDrive account. I'm then going to execute that request, and then I'm going to walk through all of the results and write out the uh, file ID followed by the file name. So now I can build and test our application. So I'm going to open up the command prompt uh, inside of my project. And I'm going to start just to make sure that our developer certificate has been uh, trusted uh, in, in, uh, on my console. So I'm going to say .NET dev certs HTTPS trust. I'm going to go ahead and pass in the password for my application or for my uh, workstation. Right. So we can see we've already trusted it. So that's in good shape. The next step is going to be .NET build. That's going to create our application or compile our application. The last step is just to run the application. So I'm going to run it by doing .NET run. Now the first thing it does is it's prompting me for my username. So I'll put my username in and then I'm going to then, and then it's going to prompt me for my password. So I'll go ahead and enter my password in as well. Here we can see that the request succeeded. So if I scroll up and see what the, the beginning of our request, that after we entered in our credentials, we can see the list of results of all the files for the currently signed in users OneDrive root file that have been written out to the console. So we have the ID of the file on the left, and then we have all of the file names uh, to the right. 